is truly the most wonderful time of year where we can share Jesus so openly, even in our communities. So again, I say, as you're out there and you hear the songs of Christmas playing wherever you are, join in, sing aloud, even if you're concerned about singing it on key. Just make a joyful noise unto the Lord and glorify his name. So today I want to pray that as you leave and as we conclude that you might today think a little bit about Jesus' birth and, and how it offers us peace. Even in the middle of, of difficulties and stresses, Jesus in his birth can offer us peace. Today, as we conclude in a few moments, I, I, I pray that you will feel peace is not the absence of conflict. Hear me, and we'll talk about this briefly. Peace is not the absence of conflict. It is the presence of Christ. Yeah. Are we recording back there, Joe, for everyone? So those of you at home who couldn't be with us, I'd say one more time that you might remember Peace is not necessarily the absence of conflict, but it's the presence of Christ within us. So the world can ask you, how can you have yet peace? It's because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. And I pray that as you go today, that you'll take time to share with God the stresses of your life. And trust that his favor is on you today. He longs to bring you peace. So all of you here today and those who will be watching later at home, I pray that you will, first of all, think about Jesus' birth and what it gives to us and how it brings peace. That you also then will take time to share your stresses and concerns with them. The Lord, God wants us to do that. And today, we're going to take a moment or two to do that. So we, we are in the middle of a series. We're in the middle of a series of the heart of Christmas. Today is week number two, peace in the heart of Christmas. Last week we talked about hope, and we will talk about peace today, and then love and joy, or joy and love in that order, as we share Christmas and what Christ brings to us in this season. So like I said, last week we began with the hope of Christmas, the heart of Christmas, and we see the faithfulness of God even from his prophetic word about Jesus' future coming. We believe that Christmas was the first advent, if you will, his first coming. And we believe, go ahead and say it with me, we believe. We believe. Make sure you're all stirred there with me and you all have set your coffee down and you're ready now. That we believe. We believe that Jesus Christ came as a baby in the manger, grew up, walked among us, died on the cross, rose again. And we believe he's coming again. The, the second advent, if you will. The second coming of Christ is coming again. Hallelujah. Yeah. We believe. No matter what. Let's say no matter what. No matter no what. what. I won't make you talk back to me all the time. I just want to make sure you're with me and give everybody time to settle in. Listen, no matter what we face, God is right on time and will meet us in our time of need every time. In that, we can have hope. In that, we can find peace that we're going to talk about today. As we get ready to light the candles for us, ourselves today, to remember letting our lights so shine that all peoples who see us might see Jesus. So we light these candles to remind us, especially during the season, that we're supposed to be letting our light shine wherever we go. And so today I read for you from John chapter 1. It says, there came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness, you know, John the Baptist, the man in camel's hair who ate locusts and honey. You remember the story? So he, John, came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men might believe. He himself, John, was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. John the Baptist testifies concerning him. He cries out saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace we have all received one blessing after another. Now this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Christ. 
They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who have sent us. What do you say about yourself? John the Baptist replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. Today, let us do that. Let our lights so shine that we would make straight the way of the Lord. When we light these candles today, we'll first light the candle of hope, in which we have now because we know Jesus came. Right? Yeah. That gives us hope. If he came once, and by prophecy written even over 700 years before, he said he would come, he came. We know that he holds true to his word, that he'll come again. So today we will first light the candle of hope. And I will ask Benjamin to come first. So we'll light this one. And then Sophie, would you like to come and stand right here with your brother? I'll let you light this one, and then you can hand that to your sister, and she'll light this one. And then you see how this works? So let's slide this up. And then when we're ready to put it out, Sophie, you just pull it straight down, okay? Okay. So let's do that a little bit more. This candle we lit last week reminds us that Christ brings hope into our life. So today we're going to be talking about the peace of God. So let's go ahead and scoot it back up a little bit. Light it here on this one. And then light this one over here as we remember the peace of God. You know, the second candle we light today, the candle of peace, it is sometimes also called the Bethlehem candle to remind us of the place in which preparations were made to receive and cradle the Christ child. Peace is a gift that we must be prepared for. And sometimes it takes a little while to light that peace in our hearts. Maybe that's why it took a moment to light. We need to remember it takes time to prepare our hearts. And it's preparing in the hope that we have for Christ that we can now celebrate peace. For peace is a gift that we must be prepared for, and God gives us the gift of peace when we turn to him in faith. The prophet Isaiah calls Christ the Prince of Peace. Through John the Baptist and all the other prophets, God asks us to prepare our hearts so that he may come in. Our hope is in God, and in his Son, Jesus Christ. Our peace is found in him and in him alone. We light the candles today to remind us of that peace as we trust in him. And today, we'll look at this aspect of peace, another part of the heart of Christmas. We'll let you take the children if you would like, Betty, thank you. And they have a couple of cute craft projects we're going to be working on over the next few weeks to present to family and friends for Christmas. So We'll take a few moments while they are there. We're going to look at a few scriptures together in Luke chapter 2, Colossians chapter 1, and Matthew chapter 5. If you don't catch them all or you don't write them down, I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. You can go to our website. Also, you can go to YouTube and just type in Lakeside Open Bible Dexter, and it'll pop up. There's a whole library of many different messages. Last week is there if you missed part one of the series, and you can follow right along so that you can stay with us and know what we're sharing. As we're having Advent, if you will, the season of hope and expectation. Again, we're going to be talking about hope, peace, joy, and love. 
the first point I want to share with us real quickly is the peace of God is for all people. Go ahead and say for all people. For all Even people. Even for you at home today, all of us all around, peace is for all people. God came to save all people. And we're going to look at that a little bit. Now the reason for Jesus' birth is God's deep desire to see his creation no longer broken and in conflict, but rather restored and at peace. He sent his son that we might know him intimately. The Christmas story in the Bible begins with an unlikely group of people. The first announcement of the arrival of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem was given by a multitude of angels. We'll read that passage in a moment. But given to an unlikely group, a group of shepherds, if you will, who were out in the fields watching their flocks to keep them safe at night. Let's uh, read that passage in Luke chapter 2. Now there was, or there were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angels said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all, all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all men. You know, shepherds in the first century were individuals who existed on the fringe of society. They were considered perhaps stinky and unclean and dirty and not even trustworthy at times. They lived on their own for months. Their social skills were probably pretty limited because they talked to sheep most of the time, not with people. And sometimes I think some of us don't know how to talk to one another anymore. Everywhere I go in the city, as I drive my big yellow bus all over the city of Eugene and Springfield, everybody's like this with their phones. You watch couples at a restaurant, and they're like this with their phones. You watch kids at the bus stop, and they're like this with their phones. They're not talking with each other anymore. We don't know how to communicate. Perhaps these shepherds didn't have phones, but they weren't with people very often. So again, they were considered perhaps the least among people. But God sees it differently. You know, it would have been shocking, perhaps, to the first readers of the book of Luke that these were the people God chose to entrust with such an important message. But how, how glad we can be that God's ways are not our ways. Amen. And he uses the things that the world might seem to be of no importance, and those who might seem, according to the world's standards, to be of not to glorify his name. What I, I find most amazing is that when God wanted to announce the arrival of his son, he did not do it in the presence of kings or queens. He announced it to the poor and the forgotten. It truly is good news because if God's favor was offered to the shepherds, then surely... God's favor and peace is available to us all. He's no respecter of persons. Yes, the Bible means that means is that if he can love them, he can love this. And believe if he can love this, he can love you, even you at home. We invite you to come be with us. I'm grateful for the thing that we have learned to do to videotape, so forth, in people's home. But I say everybody needs somebody and we need to be together. So I encourage you in the fellowship of the brethren together. Keep yourselves healthy and well. If you're sick and have a fever, please stay home and watch us later. But if not, join us. We need to be together. Now, it is the world's greatest need is Christ in us and us with Christ and with one another. From the time that sin entered into the world, 
and affected all of creation, we have been at odds with God. And the Bible says we were enemies of God and in rebellion even against his rule and reign. And sin didn't just stop there, dear ones. It also caused us to be in conflict with one another and even ourselves. This is why Jesus' birth was and is such good news. Even with the conflict with others and ourselves and against God, the birth of Jesus offers us a way back to have a relationship with God, the divine creator of all the universes. It is the ultimate answer to the brokenness that exists because of sin. Brokenness between ourselves and God and others. This is the way Paul put it as he wrote to the church in Colossians, Colossae. Paul was expressing the role that Jesus plays in making peace. Uh, Colossians chapter 1. For it is pleased, for it is pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, him, Jesus, and by him to reconcile all things unto himself, God the Father. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace to the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet know he has reconciled you. And the body of his flesh through the death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. See, to understand the peace that is, un, is ushered to us at Christmas time, we must understand that through Jesus arriving in a cradle, his life led us to the cross. They are connected. They're not two different great events. They're all interconnected. Jesus intentionally lived a sinless life and willingly, I say willingly, offered his life through crucifixion. Paul said, it is the blood of Jesus Christ that makes peace between us and God. Christ's sacrifice on the cross pays for the sin that we've committed. It appeases God's anger, if you will, towards sin, and it destroys the power of evil in our lives. The cross. Being reconciled to God is the key to experiencing peace and every other area of our lives. I say being reconciled unto God is the key to create peace within ourselves. The peace of God is for whom? All people. The second thing I want to look at is Jesus reconciling us to God. We have communion that we know we can be reconciled. Christmas is a time, a season. The whole life of Christ and the purpose of Christ is to reconcile us back into God the Father, the creator of all things. When we receive the, the gift of forgiveness that is offered to us by faith, we become friends of God. And he offers us his power to help us navigate the difficulties of life. That's where we have the peace. See, his presence and power living in, in us helps us to navigate through life. We can still do life and stuff in all the goodness. But there's sometimes life is good, yes? Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's ugly. Sometimes. But at all times, we'll say all times. All times. All right, you're back and get your second cup of coffee. All times. All peoples. Are you with me? Say you all. You all. That's for my brother in Tennessee who will be watching and calling yeah. later. Praise God. All things are reconciled through the blood of Christ. Some may believe that being made right with God means they will never face problems. Have you ever thought that? Well, I gave my life to Jesus and now... You know, this is not the case. In fact, I don't know if you've ever heard of a, a pastor and speaker named Dr. Tony Evans, but he says it like this. And I like his quote, so I'll use it. Peace does not mean you won't have any problems. Peace means that problems won't have you. And I say that one more time for you at home. You see it on the screen. Did I put it up there? Maybe I did. Let's see. Peace does not mean you won't have any problems. Peace means that your problems won't have you. You won't be controlled and consumed 
by the problems and things of life. Trouble still comes. In fact, my book, and if we're reading the same book, the Holy Word of God says that rain cometh down upon the good and the bad. We all still experience some things in this world that are unpleasant. But see, we have the peace of God. The Bible puts it this way, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Peace that supersedes, that overcomes even our circumstances. That's the peace we should be sharing. That's the light that we need to give to the world. That even though we may have difficulties in life, we can have peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for that peace. The peace that's offered to those whom God's favor rests, like the shepherds. You, me. We may still have circumstances that have go our own way. We may still at times have challenging relationships to navigate through. But his peace promises us the presence of God in our lives. And if he is with us, there is nothing, nothing we should fear. But we have his peace. We can go to him for guidance and strength. You can say, Jesus, help. And he comes and brings a peace that I can't necessarily explain unless you've encountered it and experienced it for yourself. It's supernatural. The peace that goes beyond what we can understand with our mortal mind. This peace is offered to whom? All peoples. Yes? God desires for us to make peace within ourselves. Every past mistake, dear ones, every personal struggle or our worry for the future is met with the love and grace of God. We also make peace with others because of his forgiveness. We can put our trust in him. As we get closer and closer to Christmas Day, we move through a season known as the Advent season. An Advent does come from a Latin word, if you will. It means a couple things, but it also means the arrival of. The coming and or the arrival of. The promise of God to humanity, Jesus. Jesus' first coming was the arrival of God's light to the world. Like sitting around a lit Christmas tree at night, the glow of God's presence washes over us. I love the Christmas lights. I shared last week, I was almost looming, blooming the, the, the fall of all the colorful leaves on the trees. They, like overnight, they seemed to disappear. And then overnight, it seems like lights came up. And the bright lights of Christmas are all about us. Enjoy them. Use them. Let anything and all things that humanity might bring, redeem it. Use it for the glory of God. It calms our fears and steadies our hearts. At Christmas time, we also make note of another advent that is to come. One day in the future, Jesus will return and make all things right once and for all. We have that hope. In his first coming, we find that peace in him being with us now. His peace covers our past, meets us in our present, and is a promise for the future. I'll say again, his peace covers our past. Hallelujah. How many glad for that? His peace, his blood, his life covers our past, meets us even now in our present day and time, and is a promise for the future. In that, I have peace. I find peace. The last thing I'll share with you is his peace is our purpose. It said, peace is our purpose. We are to bring peace and hope to the world. Let your light so shine that the world might know hope and peace. Next week, we'll talk about the joy that that should give you because we have hope and peace. And then on Christmas morning, we'll wrap on all up in the love of Christ brought to us first in a manger. Matthew chapter 5 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I don't know about you, but I want to be known as a peacemaker, not a rebel and a miser. I want to be known as a peacemaker. One who loved all people. Maybe not all behaviors, because we don't, but all people, as God loves me. See, what the world needs, dear ones, what the world needs is more of his people who have the peace of God in their hearts and who are willing to share that peace with others. I love how King Solomon wrote in the book of Proverbs, I actually had my, uh, well, now all four of my children in their teen years needed to be reminded, and maybe I too needed to be reminded, so we wrote this passage together many times. Romans chapter 15 says that harsh words stir up more anger, but a soft answer will turn away wrath. 
That's where you can bring peace. Now, I know that I'm right. How many times you said that to our children? Or they said it back to us. No, I'm right. You're wrong, Dad. And, you know, we can get into this conflict, and we do this with the world. It is wrong that they didn't let Jesus in the parade. And we can get angry, we can have a conflict about it, or we can bring peace. Are you with me? Are you understanding? A soft answer will turn away wrath, but harsh words will stir up the fire. What the world needs, people, are more of God's people bringing the hope and the peace, the joy and the love of Christ. Now, I'll still speak the truth, and it might offend thee. If the truth offends thee, so let it set you free. Just speak it in love. Jesus never hammers me. The thought in my heart and to his word, and sometimes to a brother or a sister that says, Hey, Mike, bring peace. Matthew 5 says, Let us be a peacemaker. You know, the angels told the shepherds that peace was available to those on whom God's favor rests. Jesus said something similar when he stated the fact that if you are a peacemaker, you shall be called the child of God. Let God's favor rest upon you as you go and be a peacemaker, even in this season. When, when we are willing to seek reconciliation with others and fight for harmony rather than sowing dissension, or the fact that I'm right and I know that I'm right and you're wrong and you know that you're wrong, what does it matter? What matters is that Jesus still loves me even when I'm wrong. Can I still love others even when I know they're wrong? Are you hearing me? Let your light so shine that we can give hope and peace to the world. Not because we know that we're right. Because we know the one who is right. Jesus and to his word. We find peace at the heart of Christmas, dear ones, because God desires us to be in right relationship with him. With ourselves and with others. It is the very reason for which Jesus came to the earth. To reconcile us unto himself and to one another. To bring peace and the love of God. So again, in closing, I just want to say today, I am praying. I am praying that we find peace at the heart of Christmas. Because God desires us to be in right relationship with him and others. So as we leave today, I want you to think about Jesus' birth. And how it offers us peace in the middle of our difficulties and stress. We're going to close in prayer moment. So as we think about Jesus' birth. And how it offers us, all of us at home and here today and around the world. It offers us peace in the middle of our difficulties and stresses. Also, dear ones, I want you to, to feel... Peace is not the absence of conflict. It is the presence of Christ. Let us bring the presence of Christ into our communities this holiday season and every day. Into our homes, the, the peace by the presence of Christ. And lastly, the thing to think about and ponder is what I want you to do is take time to share with God the stresses of your life. And trust that his favor is on you today. He longs to bring you peace. With those thoughts in mind as we enter the busyness of the Christmas season, I hope that you enjoy and take opportunity everywhere you go to share the hope of the season and the hope of Christ. To take now maybe hopefully some of the peace you've received even from being gathered here together today in our Father's house, take it with you and share it to the world. Let's pray. God, today we think about the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we thank you, God, for the peace it brings, even in the middle of difficulties and stresses. Help us by the Holy Spirit of God to feel, to feel that peace in our hearts and knowing that it's because of the presence of Christ that we have peace. Help us today, God, to take time to share with others and with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Before that, go and ask you three questions. Write them down at home if you can. Go back and look. Write them down now. But think about these things this week. Next week we'll come back together. What kind of things tend to rob peace from your life? Think about it for just five seconds. What kind of things tend to rob peace from your life? I don't have enough money. I have too much money. I don't. What, what, what robs peace from your life? 
Number two, how is the presence of God and the presence of peace related? If you were listening today, taking notes or whatever, go back and review later. What, I say, or how is the presence of God and the presence of peace related? Are they connected? Thirdly, what is one practical way that you can live this season and all of your life as a peacemaker? I'll ask you that question one more time. What's one practical way that you can live your life as a peacemaker? So God, we pray that these things you'll keep in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Next week we'll be visiting how Christmas season and all brings the joy in all circumstances. So God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Be blessed and know that God loves you. Take his hope now. Take his peace and share it with the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.